Now, Dr. Strauss, what did the earliest followers of Jesus believe about his identity? One of the most indisputable facts about early Christianity was that very shortly after Jesus' crucifixion, his, believer, his, his followers began to proclaim that he had risen from the dead, that he was the Son of God, risen from the dead, exalted to the right hand of the Father. Um, you read through the book of Acts and you see that, that his followers are praying to him, they are worshiping Jesus. Now, in, in our context, in our Christian context, that may not be so, so shocking, so surprising, but place that prayer in the context of first century Judaism, which is thoroughly monotheistic, believes in the one true God of Israel. All of a sudden, Jewish Christians in Israel are praying to Jesus as God mm. at a very, 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 very early date. That's really it's shocking. It's revolutionary. It? Well, I guess anybody can make a claim that they're the son of God. But as you say, Jesus actually convinced his followers that he is God. And people through the centuries, millions and millions of people have believed that. Um, what evidence is there really to support that claim, to back it up? What credentials? does Jesus offer to convince us? Well, I think that the, the greatest and final evidence, as Jesus himself said, is, is his resurrection from the dead. He made extraordinary claims about himself, and then he predicted that he would rise from the dead. Um, he could, everything he said could have been disproven if that hadn't happened, but in fact, it happened. And the evidence for the resurrection is, is really extraordinary. How about for you personally? Do you believe that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the ultimate authentication of his claim to being the Son of God? Absolutely. And I think the historical evidence for the resurrection is really overwhelming when you approach it, even from a skeptic's perspective when you, you approach it. Just five basic, almost indisputable historical facts related to the resurrection. The first, that Jesus died on the cross. The Romans were good at what they did, that he died on the cross. Secondly, that he was buried, in fact. We had a name of the owner of the tomb, Jer Joseph of Arimathea. Not only that he was buried, but that three days later, the tomb was empty. Jesus' opponents never claimed that the tomb wasn't empty. They could have gone and got the body and shown the body. Um, to, to prove that he hadn't risen from the dead. Instead, they said the disciples stole the body so that the tomb was empty. Fourth, that Jesus' followers saw Jesus alive, that they are willing to die for that claim. They saw Jesus alive. And that then that the disciples' lives were absolutely transformed. These people were willing in Jerusalem to proclaim the resurrection, even though they faced almost certain death. So if you were on a jury weighing this evidence, would you render the verdict that Jesus really must be who he claimed to be? I think the evidence is overwhelming. I would, I would say absolutely Jesus was who he claimed to be, the Son of God and God in flesh. Well, one Muslim friend of mine claims there's a contradiction in the Christian belief because uh, Christians believe that God, uh, Jesus is fully God and fully man. And he said to me, Lee, to be human means to have limitations and be divine means to have no limitations. So Jesus cannot be limited and unlimited at the same time unless he's schizophrenic. So is Jesus schizophrenic? The New Testament actually addresses the issue of how Jesus can be both human and divine. It remains a mystery. I think the incarnation that God became a man will always remain a mystery. But in, Paul talks about it in Philippians chapter 2. He says that though Jesus existed in the very form of God, though by very nature he was God, he emptied himself. When he became a human being, he emptied himself. Now, what exactly does that mean? We don't know all that that entails, but it certainly means that he set aside the independent exercise of his divine attributes. Dr. Strauss, uh, some people, many people as a matter of fact, uh, find the idea that, that God came and lived among us to be a very hopeful and a very positive um, thought, but it generates hostility from a lot of people. Some people uh, just get angry at this very idea. Why is it that the claim of Jesus, that he's the son of God, the unique son of God, why does that spark so much opposition? That's a good question. I think there's various reasons. One, one is there's an internal difficulty in, in, in the logic of it for us as human beings. We are human beings, and so for us to try to conceive what it would be like to be both human and divine is, is very difficult uh, to think about. And so throughout history, people who have struggled with that idea have tried to solve the mystery of the incarnation by coming down on either one of two sides, either denying Jesus' deity 
on the one hand are denying his humanity. Uh, those who deny his humanity claim that Jesus wasn't truly a human being. He only appeared to be a human being. That's called docetism, from a Greek word meaning to appear or to seem like that. Um, those who deny his deity claim that he was really just a, a human being, just, just a, a mere human being, a good prophet, a, a good man, uh, maybe a very powerful individual in a lot, of, a lot of different ways, but that his later followers turned him into a god. And so there's, there's an attempt to solve the logic. We want things to work out clearly in our mind. So I think that's one of the reasons. I think another reason is we are by nature fallen human beings and in rebellion against God. And to acknowledge that Jesus is in fact uh, truly human and truly God means that he has certain claims on our lives. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to submit to those claims on our lives. We don't want to depend on him for our salvation because it means we have to let go. Uh, Jesus said if anyone wants to follow me they have to deny themselves, take up their cross and, and follow me and that's, that means we have to give up our own life and give our life to him and by nature we don't like to do that. We don't like to give up ourselves um, to someone else and our independence to someone else. Well, Dr. Strauss, if it is true that Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, and I think you've given us good evidence that he did make that claim, and if it's true that he backed that up by the resurrection, and as you say, there's solid historical reasoning to believe that the resurrection actually occurred, then what are the implications for all of us today living in the 21st century? What should that mean for us? Well, these are really the fundamental questions of life, right? Every human being looks around at the world around them and they say, um, why are we here? Is there a purpose and meaning for life? Well, if Jesus was who he said he was, the Son of God, who came to earth to reverse the effects of our fallen human nature, the effects of our fallen creation, um, then that is the answer to the most ultimate and deepest questions of life. Why are we here and where are we going? And so um, every person needs to ask that question. If Jesus is indeed truly God, if he's truly hu a true human being, if he suffered and died for my sins, then I need to respond in faith to him. I need to trust him as my personal savior. 